Hello, I'm putting together a Debian Nginx web server configuration and installation tutorial. Um, so this is going to cover how to set up and install Nginx as a web server, a uh, proxy web server, on Debian's, Debian Wheezy. It'll also work on Debian Squeeze with minor changes. Uh, and it's going to include PHP FPM and MySQL configuration. So we're going to start by... Uh, we've logged into the service right here. I'm in the account right now. This is just a virtual machine. Uh, Nginx is nice because it runs on a really small amount of uh, resources, so it's really good for development purposes. Um, if you're in the 421 RIT class, you're going to want to install the IP tables, firewall package, configure it to open ports 80 and 443, uh, antivirus like claim AV. There's a few other things in our checklist there. Um, I won't be covering installing the system or configuring any of that. So just a heads up. So we're going to start by installing Nginx. Uh, it's very simple. We just install it with a package manager. <clears throat> There's no compiling from source, which saves us a whole lot of trouble. Okay, so now that we've installed the package, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the SRV folder here. We're going to make a directory called www, and we're going to change ownership to my user real quick. We're going to create a directory for our website. We're going to call it Sitebook. So that's part of what the class requirement is here. And we're going to create two folders inside of that, public HTML and logs. I'm sure you're familiar with those. And we're going to create a demo file, actually two of them, inside of the public HTML. We're going to create index.html. We're just going to add some simple HTML. And we're going to create... Oh, don't need a pseudo there. We're going to create index.php. Just to show you what happens when you try running PHP on a server that doesn't have PHP. So, we're going to create our configuration file. It's in Etz Nginx. And I'm going to show you this real quick. Nginx has two different folders that it uses for configuration. It has sites available and it has sites enabled. By default, there's a default file, and we're going to remove that from sites enabled, but we don't even have to do anything else as far as that goes. Um, and the way this works is you put your configuration files in sites available, right? And you edit them, and you have the ability to do all kinds of stuff there, and then you symlink them to sites enabled. This way, if you want to disable a site temporarily, all you have to do is remove its symlink. So what we're going to do is we're going to create... sitebook.loc and we're going to copy this configuration right into it. And this is a basic HTML uh, website configuration file. It's listening on port 80. We're going to change this to .loc that means um, it's creating logs for access and errors in the logs folder and its root is the public HTML and by default when you go to the root address it'll go to index.html. That includes any folders inside of it. So we're going to add that to there Again, change this to loc. So the configuration for Nginx websites is actually very straightforward and very simple. Now, if we want, we can also do this right here. What that will do is it will mean if they don't enter www, that will then take them to the same site. So you can actually add any number of names to this. We're going to go into another terminal here so I can open up on my local machine the hosts file and this is so that we can add a record. And I'm actually pretty sure that I already have the record so I'm going to show you that real quick. Right here I've added two entries for sitebook.loc and www.sitebook.loc and the IP address. And what this will do is when I type those in it will automatically resolve to those IPs which are the web server that I'm, the server's IP that I'm using. So, all right, so once we've created this file, what we can do is we can run a test on it by doing nginx t. Actually, we can't do that yet, I'm sorry. We have to create a symlink. I forgot about that. 
we're going to create a sim link where we take sites available and we put it to sites enabled. Now we can run the test. And if that works out, and we just restart the service. Okay. Now if we want to check to see if that worked, we just open up a uh, new tab, sitebook.loc. I have to type this in because it's a weird location, so it won't believe that it's real. There we go. New page not found. Let me see. And you'll notice we're getting an end. Nginx uh, error page. I'm guessing it's because I didn't chmod my contents inside the SIV folder. So let me double check that real quick. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, it wasn't. It's because I was appending something from the previous test. Uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, so now we have this is HTML. Now what happens when we try to go to the index.php file? This actually varies by browser. This one will try to download the file. So it doesn't actually load anything, it just downloads it. Some browsers will just display it as raw text, which means you'll just see the open and close tags and the internal contents, which is not good, because if you have anything like passwords and stuff that are supposed to be server side, they'll be delivered as raw text accessible to the user. That's usually not a good thing. So, this right here is our working Nginx web server. It's very basic. Now we're going to add PHP FPM to the mix. And that is, again, going to start us off with an installation. Now, this is actually quite a few different things. We have PHP 5 CLI, PHP 5 FPM. You don't have to have the CLI, but it makes it easier if you need to run or test a PHP file from the command line. A lot of new frameworks like CodeIgniter, uh, Laravel and FuelPHP also use uh, command-based um, utilities for setup, and you need to have uh, CLI in order to use them. Uh, and these packages are optional. This is actually for some of the demos I'm going to be putting together, but the international packages for better UTF-8 uh, Unicode support. Uh, the GD is the image library, APC is for caching objects, and mcrypt is for better encryption protocols. So we want all of those, or at least I do. PHP-APC for some reason doesn't have PHP 5 in front of the uh, title, so that's just something to keep in mind there. You may have to run a search to check it. So this is where the deviation occurs. If you're running uh, Debian Squeeze, this can this should be pre-configured for you. If you're running Debian Wheezy, it expects a sock file to exist. Uh, or at least to be made, and that sock file does not exist yet. And it may just be you know, a matter of a uh, later configuration, because Debian Wheezy is still in production. It's not, uh, it's not a um, stable, marked as stable system yet. So, but what we need to do is we need to modify the configuration file so that it uses the actual raw address and port. So, let's do that. We're looking for is the listen directive. And we're going to change that from the sock file to a raw address. Move the loop back, and we set 9000. You don't have to use 9000, you can use another port. Uh, this just happens to be a common one. Okay, and then we also want to modify the php.ini file because php.ini file contains no time zone yet. So some things will complain when you don't have a time zone. Now mine is America slash New York. Uh, for a list of time zones, you can find them right here. Now there's also one other setting you can modify, and this is entirely optional. But if you are working as a with this as a development server, you probably want to turn on the display errors setting. What this will do is it will display errors when PHP encounters them. Uh, by default, it will actually pull, put them into the log file, and that's not very useful. I mean, if you're trying to develop a website and you have to constantly go into the system uh, and access the log files to check to see why it's not running right, 
that can be a that can be a big delay. So look for display errors, and you change that from on to off to on. So now that we've made these changes, we're going to actually restart the service. Okay. And now we need to add PHP processing to Nginx. Nginx acts as a proxy for something like this. Uh, and that's actually really nice for performance reasons because it means that it's not trying to do everything at once. Uh, PHP is handled entirely separately almost. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the Nginx folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a modular configuration. We're going to create PHP conf right in the top folder here. We're going to paste this in. And what this does right here is it finds any files that end with .php, and it will forward them to the proxy for us. So that's what this is right here. Um, now, you can actually take this, and you could actually do something like... Um, that right there, and it will parse both PHP and HTML extension files. But that's really not recommended um, for a lot of reasons. So, in any event, with this right here, it will forward the forward the information to the uh, proxy and it will receive the parsed information back. Uh, but that's not going to work by default. We have to add one more thing and this is the nice part, ready? So if we go into the sites available and our configuration file and any configuration file from here on, we add PHP parsing just by doing include and the PHP conf file right there. And that will add parsing. Now we can run a test real quick. And we can restart. Okay. And then we're going to remove the file we created earlier, which was the index.html file. Oh, there's one other thing we needed to do, my bad. Sitebook.loc is by default going to index.html. We want to add index.php. Okay. And now that we've added that, we can give this a real quick test by going back to the same location. And did I create a PHP file? I thought it did. Oh, that would be why. Okay. All right, so now if we load that, we'll see that we have our PHP information listed right here. Um, now, obviously, there are other ways to test it that are more secure if you happen to be working on an open based server, uh, but I'm expecting that most of us won't be, so this is just temporary anyways. Uh, and next, we're going to move on to configuring and installing MySQL. MySQL is going to be two new packages. We're going to install the MySQL server, and we're going to install PHP 5-MySQL, and that's an extension that gives us a bunch of additional features relative to PHP. Now it's not required, but it is recommended. Now, MySQL also comes with this nifty script called MySQL Secure Installation, which will limit, it will help you with the configuration process in general. Um, you'll notice right now that as this is going through, once it goes through, try that again. There we go. All right. So as that goes through, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to prompt us for a root account password. Uh, obviously, you want that to be secure. Um, when you go through the installation right here, if you don't set a password, or even if you do, this will ask you to set a password just in case you haven't. Okay, so that's going to go through. We're going to run this afterwards. What this will do is it will limit local access to local only. It will remove temporary accounts and temporary database information because it has a bunch of test information in there when it first installs. And it will ensure that the uh, permissions have been freshly loaded. So it's a nice script to run right after you've set it up. If you have IP tables firewall and you are trying to allow external access, you're going to need to add uh, port 3306 to the IP tables uh, as an open port. Uh, it's really probably a wise choice to make sure that you limit access by IP for known valid web servers if you're trying to make it uh, accessible externally. So we're going to do sudo SQL secured installation. So we've got our password. We're going to enter real quick. We don't want to change it. We do want to remove anonymous information, disallow login, 
and we have the test database and reload the privileges. There we go. All right. And if we log into it, we're going to create a new table or a new database. This is for the next tutorial, uh, but this is just going to be an example used for the next piece, which is installing and setting up PHP MyAdmin. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a user. We're going to do that in the same line as the grant. We're going to grant all privileges on mwiki.star to wiki at localhost identified by, and I don't recommend this as a password, password. All right, so and that created our account. We're going to exit that, and good. We're going to go into SRV www, and the next step of this guide is setting up PHP MyAdmin. PHP MyAdmin can be a security risk if you do not configure it correctly. So I don't recommend it on production servers, but I do think that it's extremely useful if you happen to be working on a non-production server. So we're going to download PHP MyAdmin, and we're going to extract it, and we're going to use it. Yeah, that's what we name it first. It's a really goofy long name. Contents of there, we're going to move that. PMA. Okay, and we're going to remove the tar. And we're going to chmod that recursively all the way down. Okay, and then we need to create a configuration file. This configuration file is very basic. Obviously, this right here is what, where you need encrypt. Uh, we'll use this for the Blowfish uh, encryption. Uh, so you want to use something secure there. For the demonstration, I'm not really going to be worried about that. So we're going to create config.inc.php. We're going to paste that right in there. Okay. So we're not done yet. We need to have a link to this. Now, I like to make it possible to access from multiple websites. So I'm going to do this again with a modular approach. We're going to go through and we're going to add a pma.conf to the Etsy Nginx folder here. And it's going to contain this information right here. Now, what I do for security is I set it to deny all except for a subnet of IPs, and in this case, this subnet is my local address, so I'm going to actually change this to the virtual machine. Uh, so it's going to be a subnet just like that. So this means that all IPs passed here, so all IPs underneath this subnet, this uh, IP group right here, will work. So 1 to 255 on the end. All right, and again, we're going to need to modify our sites available to add this processing. We want to add it above the PHP processing. That's because this is going to have PHP files in it, so it may hit one before the other, which will create a problem because it'll look for the file where it isn't. So just note that you have to add it before the PHP module there. Okay. We're going to test it, and that works. going to restart the service. We can give this a spin real quick. So if everything worked and we go to our sitebook.loc, we can go to slash PMA now, and this will take us to a login where we can log in using our account. Now, I remembered my credentials from the last time, so that's just something to note. Alright, right now, and this will take us to our account right here. Now we can manage the information in a GUI which is a lot easier than the command line for some of us. So, in any event, that concludes the tutorial. Uh, the next tutorial I will be putting together will be setting up media review.